There's nothing really more soul crushing than something you loved from your childhood not living up to that expectation. Sure, there's probably other things like, you know, war and poverty and beheadings, but for me, it's a childhood cartoon not living up to the standards that I have bestowed upon it through nostalgic haze of member berries. And that's kind of the case with Beast Wars. Released in 1996, I never got to watch a ton of the show growing up. It was more or less I had a lot of the toys, especially like the McDonald's Beast Wars toys. And so I've always had like a fond memory of that. I think there was a video game of it too. It's like maybe like a fighting game or something. Or am I like confusing that with Primal Rage? I don't know. <laughs> But regardless, I always had fond memories of Beast Wars because it was Transformers, but animals. So it's cooler. Like, who doesn't like animals over cars? So when I was in Half Price Books and I found two VHS copies of Beast Wars on VHS tape, obviously, I guess. <laughs> I had to pick them up because I was like, alright, cool, it's time to relive childhood. Now, going into these, I thought these were actually, like, movies because they have a runtime of like an hour and 45 minutes. One of them is even like a feature length adventure. Uh, no, these are collections of episodes from the show and they have no rhyme or reason really. I guess with Beastie's Escape, the theme is they escape from th something. <laughs> I guess that's what the theme is. But for the other one, like I, I guess it's just episodes that run up to an hour 45 and they were like, yep, we can ship this off. Now the Beast Wars feature film, if you will, is Five episodes basically smushed together where we get kind of introduced to what's going on in the story. The story is basically when the Autobots and the Decepticons are fighting in space, they crash land on this planet where they use their scan that they normally like pick up cards and stuff to uh, find their, their fursonas, if you will. This is a bunch of furries. That planet though happens to be an abundance of energons, which is the thing that they're always after. And now the Autobots become the Maximals and the Decepticons become the Predacons. What a terrible name. <laughs> and this is pretty much the origins of the Beast Wars. Optimus Prime's like, Beast Wars! And <laughs> Megatron becomes a T-Rex in this show, which is hilarious because like, yeah, T-Rexes are big and scary, right? But normally when you see a T-Rex, they don't use their little arms. However, Megatron uses his little arms all the time and it undermines him as a threat so much because it's so goofy looking. Yes. Also, he says, yes, like a bajillion times. Like after every sentence, he has to go, yes. I like you, pussycat. Yes. It's like, what is going on here? He's also like the worst villain of all time because basically we watched 10 episodes in these two tapes and he does nothing every episode the most damage he ever causes he bites optimus prime's leg and like that's it like he gets taken out so easy constantly and like dinobots like dude i'm out of here i'm taking over the predacons you suck and the, or i'm leaving basically and megatron's like you'll step down for me and then he has another character take out dinobot and it's like he doesn't do anything. There's an episode where the pterodactyl thing tries a coup on Megatron, successfully gets the coup done, and then and then Megatron just like comes back at the end of the episode and is like, who would you rather follow, me or this loser? And everybody's like, we'll follow you. And it's like, he did nothing. He does nothing this entire show. He's like the worst villain in this series. He's like the least threatening villain of it. He might as well be a part of Team Rocket. You know what I mean? Like he's just worthless. So yeah, the first episode on this tape is basically the intro to the Beast Wars, them crash landing and finding their personas, and that's pretty much it. Not a whole lot going on here. The second episode, the Maximals and the Predacons get into a big war about the Energons. There's actually a ton of action in this episode, and it's actually probably out of the 10 episodes I watched, the best one out of them, because it's relatively fun. However, the action in this series is pretty... I, I think this is the time we talk about the animation. You know, I always remember fondly of this show not looking like this.
Good catch there, White Lotus. Um, I forgot that when the power gets tripped, we had to uh, cut the power to the house and do some work on the electric. And um, <clears throat> yep, can't hear anything. I are are we good now? I should have noticed the audio meters, but I didn't. Um, the Scarlet has a 48 phantom power switch that when the power trips, you got to reactivate that switch. So I apologize. So anyway, what I was saying was, um, good evening, everybody. Good evening, White Lotus. We're not playing, uh, uh, Coker Tron or Chonker or <laughs> Choker Tron. However you say it, we're playing mono green Tron. And I was saying that I've actually played this deck a little bit off stream. Uh, I normally don't play a lot of magic off stream unless it's in paper. But when I do play Magic Online, uh, here recently I've been playing this list, and I just love this list, so I wanted to stream it one time. Um, <clears throat> love playing this deck. This deck is super fun to play. It's everything I want to do in Magic. We're playing a bunch of big fatties, and that's all you can ask for. We have a decent amount of draw power, so uh, really excited about playing this list. So the mana base, I ran through the mana base. Uh, we're trying to utilize the Tron Lands, uh, if you don't know what the Tron lands are, where you've been. We're playing uh, four Urza Mine, four Power Plants, four Towers. If you have all three of these lands on the battlefield, they tap for seven mana. So really good. We also are running one Slag Bridge as a red-green source, indestructible. One Haunted Fingraft to recur, two Basic Forest, three Crystal Grottos to not only scry, but also we can fix our mana curve a little bit. And one Bajuka Bog. Now, that's what we're doing uh, for this deck, we are basically mono green. We are splashing some red for some good cards, but other than that, we're basically mono green. <laughs> and what we're doing with this mana is we're going to play a bunch of big fatties. We have uh, four self assemblers, which is a four four for five. That when it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for an assembly worker creature card, reveal it, put it into your hand. So kind of like a squadron hawk, but bigger. We have one Fingrin Marauder in deck. Uh, this card is just a boss of a card. Especially in this deck where we're cycling out a bunch of our artifacts. Artifacts, uh, This card can just be super, super strong. We have four Boulder Branch Golems, which is a 6-5 for 7. That when it enters the battlefield, you gain life equal to his power. So it could just be an enter the battlefield, gain 6 life. But you could just cast it for his prototype cost, which makes it a 3-3 three, three, uh, for 4 with 1 green. And then you gain 3 life. Uh, it's relevant. It's not the best, but it's relevant. We also have four Wretched Griffs, which is just a super powerful card. It's a 3-4 Flyer, and it's a Battlefield draw card. You can emerge it uh, to make it cost little to nothing, but it's just a really solid 7-drop Flyer for a deck like this. We have four Maelstrom Colossus for a 7-7 seven, seven Cascader, so we're hopefully going to cascade into one of our big cards here. Uh, and then we also have two Ulamog's Crushers, which is the 8-8 eight, eight Annihilator that uh, is just a wickedly strong card. Self assembler is an all star. Self assembler is really good. So, in order to fix our mana and to find our cards, we are running the base package that is Mono Green Tron that you'll see in like the modern version, even, or at least it was when I played modern. You have four chromatic fears, four chromatic stars, which do pretty much the exact same thing that uh, you sacrifice it. Uh, I guess chromatic star you can sacrifice and draw, like, you don't have to sacrifice it. If it just shows up in the graveyard, you get a draw off it chromatic spheres a little bit different so but basically the, the the gist is the same for both of them you're going to tap one tap it sacrifice it add a mana of any color to your mana pool and draw a card um, we also have expedition map to find our urza pieces or if we need it bajuka bog we can find it or haunted fin graph if needed you know we can find our sources if needed we have one Navigator's Compass, and it's about to gain three life, but you can also turn any of our lands into our color lands that we need. <laughs> Excuse me, so that's pretty good. And the last cards in our deck, we're running a four of Ancient Stirrings, which helps us find either our Tron pieces or some of our big guys late game. And then we have four Breath Weapons as a main deck board wiper. That's pretty much it. You know, we're trying to be bigger than our opponent. So we're going to try to like cram out some of these big guys quicker than them. So Breath Weapon is mainly just for the smaller dudes to clean up the board. <laughs> Sideboard-wise, we got three Fingra uh, Fingrin Marauders, 
one Gorilla Shaman, one Pulse Marassa, four Relics, two uh, Serene Hearts, three uh, Twin Silk Spider, and one Weather Storm. Marauder, Weather Storm, Pulse Marassa all comes in against like Burn probably. Uh, if you're not faster, go bigger. Exactly. Gorilla Shaman for the Artifact matchup. Uh, Serene Heart for the... Um, what's it called? Boggles matchup. Uh, Relic for Graveyard Hate. Twin Silk Spider for Fairies. And that's pretty much what we got going on. You may ask, what about Affinity? Well, we're hopefully just going to be bigger than Affinity, period. You know? It's like... Their little four fours are cool, but like against the seven seven, uh, we'll see. So let's run this deck, see how we do with it. Um, hopefully the Lord of the Rings stuff comes out here soon. Tomorrow, I think we're just gonna play an Abzan list that's uh, been submitted by viewers. Um, and then if or when. Lord of the Rings stuff comes out. We'll start playing some of the Lord of the Ring cards in some of like my favorite decks, see how they do, and just do a little bit of card testing there. Uh, this is a mulligan. No lands. Mulligan. Uh, this is a keep because we have all the Tron. Uh, so keep, and I'm going to bottom probably just the Crystal Grotto. Um... Yeah, I'm going to do that. I'd be a little bit greedy, keep a double tower, but that's what we're doing. Our opponent on a snow-covered island. So, tower into chromatic star, pass. Snow-covered mountain. So, this is some kind of is it deck. Um, I've noticed Delver has been picking back up a lot of popularity here recently, so a little curious about that. To like why, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I've seen Delver pop up quite a bit. This could also just be Serpentine Curve. There's a lot of stuff this, this deck could be. Um, But we're just going to plan on turn four. Turn three, Retrogrift, and a turn four, Maelstrom Colossus. Could be blue red fey very well could be but yeah my plan is just turn three wretched grift turn four maelstrom colossus mm, that's kind of cool shadow wizard money gang we love casting spells <laughs> um all right we could just agent stirrings too just to see what we find I'm going to. We get to draw a card off Chromatic Star. Let's play Agent Stirrings here. Let's see what we find here. Um, I kind of like the Self Assembler here. Self Assembler is like repeat value, potentially. Assembler. Yeah, I feel like Assembler is probably the card to get. I was really debating Crystal Grotto in case we like top deck um, the Breath Weapon. I was like, you know, the Fiery Cannon 8-ish card. So they're presenting Counterspell here, which I think I'm just going to try to cram this. Okay, we have a second Wretched Griff, so I have like no reason not to just Wretched Griff. Oh, it's worth noting, too, I guess you draw a card off the cast ability of Wretched Grift, not even if it enters the battlefield. Something I just realized. The Cascade Golem is the best reason to build a Tron deck these days. I personally think Finrin, <laughs> Fin Grin Marauder is one of the best reasons. I love that card. I like this deck a lot, though. I don't know how, like, actually good it is, but it feels good. Crimson Fleet Commodore is annoying, but we're going to cast a 7-7 seven, seven, hopefully next turn. And then, ooh. All right. Um, yeah, Maelstrom Colossus. Cascade, let's hit a Breath Weapon. Okay, cool. 
I'll play that. Uh, let's cast Chromatic Star. I'm not gonna crack the Chromatic Star. Chromatic Spear, I mean. Uh, because of Breath Weapon. We'll hold up Breath Weapon for a minute. In theory, Maelstrom Colossus is probably gonna be hard for our opponent's deck to kind of deal with. So they're probably just gonna try to hold on Monarchy until they can scred it. It could be Grixis. I've been running into against a lot of Gri Grixis decks recently too. Hi, dear buddy. They can bounce it. Please bounce it, opponent. Yeah, they could. They could snap it for sure. Um, if they pass here, pretty much, I'm just gonna attack with Maelstrom Colossus. I mean, I'm attacking with Maelstrom Colossus regardless. But if they want to snap it, you know what I mean. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> you do you, boo. My plan is just play Wretched Grip next turn. Seagate Oracle instead. Uh, let's see what they get off the top here. Oh, yeah, that's right. Seagate Oracle, you don't have to show. What, uh, your proof of purchase? One, two, they only have five. So, attack. They will chump. Sure. Um, there's an argument for just Bajuka Bog here for a land. I think I'm going to. I don't see why not. Um, Wretched Grift. If they have the scred for this, it's fine. Next turn we can play the Crystal Grotto, which is pretty cool. It's also worth noting we can crack Tower into Chromatic Spear. Yep, I figured they would have a scred for something that was smaller than that, you know? But depending, like, if our opponent goes, like, one or, like, two little creatures, that's the thing is now they've cast a Monarch, so now we're just pressuring them to hopefully get to that Monarch. Um, Self-Assembler would be nice just because we can go fetch up other Self-Assemblers. We have enough mana to cast two per turn. Um, as long as they don't counter the one. Our opponent is preordaining here, and they're going to scry one to the top, one to the bottom. They played their land for this turn. Uh, nothing. Sure. All right, let's attack. We're just trying to steal this monarchy here. Haunted land isn't bad at the moment. No, definitely not. Uh, they only did six. So they're doubling up on their spells here, or they miscounted their lands. I'm fine with them doing this play. This is a really bad play. In my opinion, it is. Um... I guess they could still have Counterspell up, right? Hmm. How much, how much mana do I have? Six, ten, eleven, twelve. Well, that'd be four. So let's say three for that. Haunted land, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do math here, uh, because we could just get back wretched grift. I'm just seeing how much mana I got. I'm just gonna do it. Okay. Wretched grift. Draw a card. Power plant. Counterspell. All right. Uh, expedition map. Pass turn. They're really fighting hard to keep this monarchy. And unfortunately, they're doing a pretty good job at it, too.
I'm probably going to fetch up another Crystal Grotto here. So I'm going to play Crystal Grotto. Let's scry one. Bottom you. Let's... Thin our deck out first before we draw. I guess I, I sequenced this backwards. I really did. Uh, I'm going to get another Crystal Grotto here. Um, another Breath Weapon. Voting a Stormcaller's Boon deck. It sucks so far. <laughs> um, they're gonna play spell setter sprite. I want this to go through. I think I'm fine with this. They have the hard counter for this. I bet they don't. Cool. <laughs> I was gonna say, I bet they do. Yep. Get another one. I could try to breath weapon too. They have the third scred. They have the third scred. If they attack, they definitely have a ninja here. I'm going to see if they ninja here. Yep. Sure. Breath weapon you. Okay. Sure. Our opponent's losing a lot of their cards, so as long as we can, like, keep the pressure up with self-assembler. I think I want that on top. I guess it doesn't matter, because I'm going to self-assembler here. self assembler is really good against fairies. Or at least, <laughs> as of right now, it is. All right. Pass turn. I don't know if I re reacted to this G%, but yeah, I would like to see the Stormcaller's Boon deck when you get it done. They're going to spell search right. Probably have another ninja here. Yeah, they definitely have another ninja. Sure. Yep. Spell Soder isn't as powerful against Tron. No, actually Spell Soder kind of sucks against Tron, which is like why I like it. Um, hopefully we can hit them with some guards. I'll post a boon deck if I can get a get it halfway decent. Why even wait? <laughs> I'm just teasing. Yeah, I'll be looking out for it. Hopefully you get it pretty good. Uh,
attack. Sure. Sure. And scred. God damn. What's up, uh, Yevgen? Hopefully I'm saying that right. How's it going? I will say this. Our opponent has literally had every answer under the planet here. Can't decide between Esper or Azorius. Esper has built, has life drain, but Azorius has more consistency. I'd probably say the more consistency is what I would probably go with. I don't know. All right, let's clean their board off here. You have answers, we have answers. Cause this see it is, I'll post it for you tomorrow. Right on. Right on. Yes, your pronounce uh yes your pronounce as well. Sweet. I'm pretty bad at um at name pronunciations. So it's pretty cool when I get it right every once in a while. Crimson Fleet Commodore. How many cards do our opponents have? Two. I got two in hand right now. This might be greedy, but... I'm going to do it again. All right. I want this damn monarch. Are we taking it? We have succeeded. <laughs> the monarch has finally become ours. First time I see this game. Oh, magic's awesome. Is this your first time watching magic? Welcome to the stream, and I hope you really enjoy it. Um, Chromatic Star... <laughs> Spell setter sprite, you son of a gun. All right, go top deck mode. Pass, draw a card, wretched grift. Nice. Yield through turn. What's up, bull? I was just saying um, at the beginning of the stream a long time ago that. Uh, I'm planning on doing Abzan tomorrow, and then the rest of the week, if the magic stuff, the Lord of the Rings stuff comes out, then I will try and um, do Lord of the Rings stuff the rest of the week. Thanks, but I'm on a work, so I cannot stay for long. Yeah, no worries. I get it. I just hope you have a good time while you're here. That's all we ask for. Not a long time, but a good time. Super excited for Abzam tomorrow. Yeah, I am too. The deck looks fun. I just want to play Volpikeet like just one time. <laughs> That's all I want to do. I just like the artwork so much. I got the uh I probably shouldn't do this mid game. I got the really cool um alt arts for the for the Foxbird. Deluxicoff's in the queues. Maybe we'll play against them at some point. Smash the dust. Cool. Just run in that main board? Sure. God damn. They have had literally nothing but answers the entire game. They have done nothing but play answers the entire game. There we go. Let's get these big hulking. Hulkins out here on the field here. <sighs> hey, 
hey, thanks for subscribing, Yevgen. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I mean, hell, they've churned through half their deck. They're down to 21 cards. Yeah, they have, like, look at this. Look at their graveyard right now. Three Screds, two Lightning Bolts, a Smash the Dust, multiple Counter, uh, counter Spell, Tap, multiple <laughs> Ninjas, Spell Starter Sprites. They've had just an insane, insane hand, and we're still trying to keep pressure up. Key word there is trying. They're Fairy Seer. They're going to scry. How are you scrying? Priest Mutator has always been a wonderful project for Darius and I, and I'm excited to see the games we started in Undying Mutate Shell. But with Persist, we unlock so much potential. Yeah, I saw the Undying. That's in the queue, too, at some point to get to. Um, but this Abzan deck we've been putting off where you've been on vacation, so I'm excited to finally get down to sit down to play it, too. Um, again, we have a lot of pressure on board for our opponent, but they've had definitely some good draws, that's for sure. The question, too, is like how many Smash to Dust are they playing main board? Sideboard wise, in this matchup, I'm probably just going to bring in Twin Silk, uh, maybe like Pulse and Marassa. I'm assuming they're not running Terror at all. Uh, and there's probably a possibility of just bringing in Fingrin, Mar Fingrin Marauders, just more aggression. Um, but we'll see. They attack with Ninja. I'm going to assume they have a Lightning Bolt. We know they have a Spell Starter Sprite in hand. I really don't want to play this Chromatic Star. The problem is, is our we have draws that are really weak to Spell Starter Sprite, like Chromatic Star. That's like one of our big issues here. They go down to four. Um, I'm probably just going to try to play this Chromatic Star and just let them counter it if they want to. Honestly, I can't wait for that Thrumberg aggro list proliferating everything. That'd be cool. They're going to Lightning Bolt. Gross. Sure. And then Spell Starter Sprite on top of that. Yep. What I figured they would do. Well, we get to draw a card off this monarch. We keep trading this monarch back and forth. Oh come on, we have so many top end cards. Where's all of our top end stuff? We still have three Maelstrom Colossus in the deck, two Ulamog Crushers, two more Wretched Griffs, like four Boulder Branch. Like you gotta think we're halfway through our cards and we've barely picked any of our big bombs. They're going to steal that back. There we go. All right. Get in there. They have to have some kind of, yeah, I'm going to say they have to have some kind of card here. To uh to block with or they're just dead. Sure. Um Maelstrom. They encounter Maelstrom. They probably have a null on the sideboard, by the way. So we get Ulamog's Crusher.
Yep, that that was enough. And they did they just leave? They just leave or did I hit something here? <laughs> I think I went through like reveal hand or something. <laughs> but our opponent said no, I've had enough. <laughs> so they just bounced. <laughs> You're the one playing fairies, okay? It might be why I like this deck a lot, is just because it's really good against fairies. This is a mulligan. Uh okay. We have turn three. No, we don't have turn three Tron, do we? Hmm. This actually makes our hand a little bit weird here just because Oh man, they punked out a little bit. Just because like we I mean we have the map. Uh I'm gonna keep. We have a lot of dig pieces here, and I think I'm gonna bottom it's gonna sound really weird, but I think I'm gonna bottom the Maelstrom Colossus here and hope we just draw another one. We get to shuffle it up so it doesn't stay on the bottom of our deck. Which is why like I'm kind of cool with just doing this. We also have the ability to potentially draw a second piece of Tron before we crack expedition map. Chromatic Star off a Great Furnace. This is either Kadatha Burn or a weird start for affinity. Either way, uh we have breath weapon. <laughs> um, so we could just search up for tower here. The next turn, chromatic star and ancient stirrings. I'm just going to pass. I'm going to pass in step crack map. Volta whispers. So I'm assuming affinity. First day of class. Okay. Well, potentially first day of class. We're not entirely sure. Go get a tower here. Draw a sphere. Play tower. Play chromatic star. Crack chromatic star. Oh, we did it wrong. Oh, that's all right. Um, play sphere. For our red mana. Crack it for green. Ancient stirrings. Oh, we need mine? Mine. Any order? Pass. We don't have a way to cast these breath weapons anymore, but against persister creatures, it's not going to be that great. Um, it's not going to be that great. So... Are you playing a couple copies of the elf which seeks out the big boy in hand? No. No. The link to the mox field is in the description if you want to check out the full deck list. That's where it's at. So we need like a crystal god at grotto or some kind of... We need some kind of... Uh... way to activate color sources so chromatic star chromatic spear navigator's compass uh crystal grotto slag wood bridges all would be great cards to draw for us flashback the faithless looting uh this is one we bring relic in i've not played against mogwarts a ton so i'm not really entirely sure like what the optimal strat here is we could screw up with Breath Weapon, potentially. Um, but it's going to be a tricky one if we can. We got to time it just right. But we again, we have to have a source, though. You know what I mean? We have to have, a, we have, to have the color sources to do so. Um, Fierce Empath. I'm not sure what that card is. Got the elf. We keep drawing red cards. I don't have uh, like any MTG bots set up here on YouTube. I'm not sure if you can set them up the same way you do on Twitch. I need to look into that. I've just not had time to really look into it. Um, 
There are bots you can get for sure. It's gonna yield through turn. We're not doing anything. There's the skirt prospector. Are we just dead here. If you just type in MTG bots, it doesn't really pull up much on Google. Uh, yeah, sure. Maelstrom Colossus, baby. Expedition map. We're one mana shy. I'm casting it. Um... But we can crack it next turn and pick up a Crystal Grotto, which will be good. It's quite possible we just have too much presence on board, but don't know. This is one, two, where Fingren Marauder will be pretty good, just because they have a lot of like chromatic stars and stuff too. Matreon, get another Putrid Goblin, play another Putrid Goblin. Um, Lumox Crusher is kind of cool. Don't know if I want to Crusher this turn or not. Let's do this. Let's get on with everybody, see how they block here. Okay. I don't think I'm going to play Crusher. I think I'm going to... Go get a Crystal Grotto. Play Crystal Grotto. Scry one and pass. Put you on bottom. Do we weapon here after tutor a Crystal Grotto? Uh, I think we weapon in... We have two, right? We have two of them, yeah. We might as well. They have a third future goblin in hand. Deadly Dispute. The classic pay two, draw three. Did, are they really drawing five cards this turn? Holy smokes. <laughs> <laughs> there's the unearth they just have the combo this turn yeah relics are coming in relics and fingrin marauder are coming in uh, I just like fingrin as a attack path here too freaking love breath weapon yeah breath weapon's awesome I mean, it could be Fire Cannon Aid too, but Fire Cannon Aid leaves Shrek alive, so. Gotta do what we gotta do, right? We get another Colossus? Hmm. So, what I think we do here is just hold up Breath Weapon, honestly. We have lethal pretty much on board. Breath weapon can kind of disrupt what they're doing. Kind of is a key word. But I'm not sure they're getting there this game. They could though. There's no way they don't have a first day of class in hand. Plays a Prospector. Um, I think we get rid of this Prospector before they can Future Goblin at all. They have another one, though. They could just have another one. Sorry, Emily, folks. No worries, Darius. No worries. Got there. 
Uh, about to run and play cornhole bags with my wife. Enjoy the rest of the stream. I'll leave it up. Leave, <laughs> leave it up and charging in the house. Yeah, no worries. Um, enjoy cornhole. I love cornhole. Professional cornhole is incredibly entertaining to watch. Like no, no joke. Super entertaining. Well played. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, do we want Fingren Marauder? Honestly. Like, I feel like Fingrin Marauder, I'm going to bring one extra in and just go down one Wretched Grift. Uh, we have the four relics. So excited for this weekend. What's going on this weekend, buddy? Uh, I'm going to go down two Breath Weapons. Like, Breath Weapon is good, but they're, they're a combo persist deck. So, like, Breath Weapon look really good there, but I don't think in the long run it's, like, the best. And I'm going to go down one spear and one star. Try it like that. Oh, this is a mulligan. Totally a mulligan. Mulligan. Oh, God. Uh, this has got to go, too. Yep, this has got to go too. This is a uh, no bueno. All right, this is better. Uh, I'm gonna keep this. I'm gonna bottom Ulamog's Crusher and probably the basic forest. Uh, LGS Popper challenge. Hold on, I'll read this in a second. LGS Popper challenge. My buddy, who's an avid commander player, is coming. I'm lending him the Boris Synthesizer deck I put in the Discord. Awesome. I hope you guys have a wonderful time. Yeah, keep me updated in the Discord uh, how you do. It's pretty good. Sorry, Mardu. No worries. Mardu, Boros, same thing, right? Yeah, you'll have to keep us updated in the Discord. If you want access to the Discord, just for anybody watching, there's a link in the description to become a member. The $1 membership, $1 a month, gets you access to the community Discord server, along with custom emotes, a badge next to your name, your name at the beginning and the end of credit of uh, streams. I just remembered the last couple of streams I haven't been doing the outro screen. I need to, I, <laughs> I need to do that. My bad. Um, and also your name turns green. We're one member away from unlocking more emotes, so that's pretty exciting. I'm playing Mono Blue Artifact Reanimator. Hell yeah. That sounds fun. <laughs> sounds really fun. Um, do we really need to do a turn three Tron? Sure. Let's get let's get Tron. And then we can just start dumping our cards. This is a matchup though, I'm not entirely sure how good relic is against them i feel like it's probably not bad though it's in the discord right on i think i've looked at it i think it sounds familiar uh mine there's a million awesome decks in the discord right now to look through so super uh super excited about that um relic Star, Sphere, Crack the Sphere for green, we draw Breath Weapon. All right, that's fine, we'll lose the mana. Anyone else to see the decks in Discords? How do they go about doing that? Uh, they'd have to join the Discord. And by joining the Discord, it's just $1 a month by clicking the link to become a member. For uh, those who are not privy to that, it's a, it's a life hack here. It's a five-minute craft life hack. <laughs> um, 
All right. Let's get the big dog in the yard. Hellstorm Colossus. Let's hit another creature. Let's not hit a wimpy card. How many times am I going to hit wimpy cards with Maelstrom Colossus? It's very satisfying when you hit like Fingrin Marauder or the Boulder or anything like that. No, I know it's a selfless plug. <laughs> or wait till Slash plays with it and then check the modified. Yeah, that's true. Um, if you have a deck list you want to submit to me, Discord is a great way to do it. But if not, just commenting the deck list. Uh, links don't work, so you got to comment the deck list. But that's a great way to do so. Psyop marketing. <laughs> Moxfield. Yeah, there also, yeah, all the, a lot of the other decks we played and stuff is on Moxfield as well. Um every deck that I play pops up on Moxfield. Some of them I haven't played yet are on there because it's a really easy website to just download and import into MGGO and vice versa. So it's just been a really like simple and awesome awesome thing for that uh we have the navigator's compass so i'm just gonna crack this star now since we have the navigator's compass here we get a land well that kind of stinks getting a little flooded here we do have the breath weapon and the relic to pop all at once so that's kind of cool. My guess is they'll have something to uh, kill the relic with, would be my guess in their deck. That'd be the card I would attack anyway. I don't know, a big 7-7 seven, seven chunky Colossus Storm, though. You know what I mean? There's the Prospector in hand. Uh, if someone wants a membership first person, they request it, I'll buy their first year. Wow. Wow, hell white lotus. That's what's up. You heard it here. If someone wants a membership, they'll buy your first year. Can't I think you can do gift subs. Like gift subscriptions, I think. I think you can do that on YouTube, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. But I think you can. This is a deck I want to run in my popper league. Yeah, this deck's awesome. I'll take the next 11 months. <laughs> um, yeah, this deck is really, really sweet, though. I really like this deck a lot. There's an argument for just breath weaping away these Matreons. They're just going to take it. All right, well. Self-assembler. Pick up a self-assembler. Pass. Leave open breath weapon and relic here. Because what's worth noting is when you navigate a compass to turn one of the Tron lands into a basic land type, it does knock off the extra mana, so it only taps for one mana. So that's something you want to keep in mind if you're going to use Navigator's Compass to curve your mana with this deck, is that it still it will tap only for one. Sorry, I meant goblin combo. This is this one's cool, but I want to do the persist combo. I think it's such a cool combo. Oh, pfft. no, I'm just kidding. It's all right. This is not like a combo deck for me. I don't hate playing against this one, but I just I don't think I would ever pilot it myself. I have no interest in piloting it. We got to figure out gift subbing. I don't know if you can. YouTube gift memberships. Become a channel member. Select number of viewers you want to gift memberships. With the membership gifting, your channel can buy a set number of channel memberships. Click on the dollar icon next to the live chat. Hold on. Is there more to this? Is it just in the beta step? Okay. Um, sure. Let him play Putrid Goblin. I need to. I need to do this somewhat properly. Um, for anybody interested, I'm trying to figure out how to do it. They're cracking the chromatic star. Sure. Um, they're down to one mana.
Hold on. Hold, please. Mountain? Breath weapon you? Crack relic? That's game, right? Breath weapon and then relic, I would assume. Yeah, that's what. Uh, in the game? Wow, that was crazy. Okay. <laughs> Let me look at this real quick. Uh, memberships to be blah, blah, blah. If you're a viewer who wants to enable to receive a gifted membership during the beta, you'll need to opt by clicking gift arrows. Get allow gifts. Announcement pops up. Yeah, okay. So I'm not sure it's like super integrated or anything right now. Hmm. All right, let me look at something real quick. Let me just see here. Um. Yeah, I don't see anything about like gifting memberships, so I'm not really too sure how that would happen. Might be something you have to do on desktop, maybe. Not mobile, but I'm not entirely sure. Good match. Well played again, sir. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate you, White Lotus. Um... So far, we're 2-0 with this deck. Like I said, I've had some good success with this deck on my own. Uh, I mean, we have double redraw, so I'm going to keep it. We have a couple turns to hopefully draw a power plant. Or expedition map. Third word falls. Oh, please don't tell me this is fog. <laughs> fog feels like it'd be pretty good against us. Um, crack you for green. Oh, cool. Agent stirrings. Mine. Mine. No, we need power plant. Power plant. Power. Okay, cool. Draw on turn three. Easy peasy. Uh, are you using Rough Goliath? No, I'm not. Uh... Using the Boulder Branch Golem, which I love this card. This Boulder Branch Golem, Golem card, I absolutely love. I think this card's fantastic. Also, I realize I'm really dark. I apologize. The little ring light that's on, that's built into the camera is not super duper strong. Let's see if I can just crank the... Um, let's see if I can just crank the gain real quick. That's a little bit better, right? I love I love Russ Goliath. All right, might be infect. Oh, it could be infect. You're right. Breath weapon. All right. Well, let's just throw down chunk. Let's throw down the chunkies. Um, uh, I'm gonna play the wretched Griff. In case I have counterspell here, the Boulder Branch Golem's a thicker card. Plus, we get the draw ability off of it, which is another wretched Griff. Nice. <laughs> cool I really like this deck a lot a lot a lot I love self assembler I love my big boy squadron hawk I love it too uh, I've played before with wretched griff so growth spiral it's fog this is fog lame this be such a lame matchup I don't think we win this matchup either 
Uh, other than well, we're bringing in the relics for sure, but I don't think we win this matchup. I'm just going to keep the pressure on here. Cast a golem. I think the best way we win is like every cre every time we attack is a kill shot. I think it's the best way we do it. Peace for real this time. <laughs> no worries. Raging uh raging bull. Enjoy some cornhole. I'm glad you made it back safe on your trip too, by the way. Hi, buddy. Oh, man. If we could find another land for Crusher. I found way more Squadron Hawk S cards. Should we do mono white? Search the entire play set for creatures up. <laughs> that would be fun. We kind of have a blue white deck that's doing that, which I think is super cool. Fog. I know this tangle. Um, what's cool is is Umox Crusher is actually going to be really hard for them to deal with. I think. So, cycle you. Get another power plant. Well, that's kind of what I wanted. So, that's cool. Five, six, seven, eight. Um, I'm going to ancient stirrings. And let's just get. A tower, I suppose. Just try to get a lot of cards, a lot of threats on the board. Ulamox Crusher. They could have a counter spell for this. They have a counter spell for this. Lame. Maybe I should have played around that. Ulamox Crusher is gonna be a would be a super duper hard card for them to deal with. Uh, I usually leave one untapped creature to avoid tangle. Yeah, could have. Could have. Would have. Should have. Yeah. I'll draw two cards. Find another crusher, you know what I mean? Well, uh, this one's simple. Breath weapon comes out, bring in relic. Then we can look at Do we want like bigger threats that hit harder? So like do we want to go down Wretched Griff, bring in more Fingrins, you know what I mean? Stuff like that. Stuff that's gonna punch in a lot grosser. Where this is one of the matchups I wish we had four of with the Mox Crusher. When I look your name up, the first VOD that pops up is Soul Tie Energy. That's awesome. <laughs> Soul Tie Energy was fun. I had a great time with it. Six, eight. So we won away from double spelling. I guess we could double spell with Colossus here. Ancient Stirrings, sure. Uh, Crusher V2. Um, map. Crack map. Let's just go get another... Uh, we should probably get a Crystal Grotto. Actually, you know what we should have got? We should have got a... Um, the other card, uh, the haunted fin fin graph, so we could pick up Ulamog's Crusher. That's what we should have done instead of Crystal Grotto. There, I got the Crystal Grotto in case we draw like Fingrin Marauder. I guess we didn't need to because we have Navigator's Pass, right? So I guess we really didn't need to. Yeah, that was a that was a punt. That was a punt. When they look my name up, it's HBO. <laughs> That's what I assume. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I assume I am. HBO named a few shows after me. Truly amazing. Yeah, if you do look up White Lotus, it does just pull up the the HBO show, which I know nothing about. I have like zero interest in it. Mitchell, thanks again for another gift sub. You're awesome. Stompy Tron, freaking awesome. Yeah, this is Monster Tron. We're playing all the big critters. Uh, we're playing against Turbo Tron, so we're not being very stompy right now, but <laughs> we're trying here. Um. Hmm. 
Well, let's play the Crystal Grotto. Scribe one. Bottom you. Uh, I'm going to attack with everything. Maybe. Maybe not. Okay, they just scoop. Okay. <laughs> then it's Rakto Sack, then Hot Dogs, and the second stream of Hijack Hijinks. Awesome. A lot of good ones. A lot of good streams there. That's for sure. Uh, Relics 100% come in over Breath Weapon. Easy peasy. Um. So the question is, like, do I want to bring in Fingrin Marauder as just extra big threats, or do we already have enough big threats? I think we already have enough big threats, right? We already have, like, a bajillion big threat curds. I'm just going to leave it as is. We could go down Navigator's Compass and just up a Fingrin Marauder, honestly. Or a Pulse of Marassa just to pick back up, like, another Ulamog's Crusher if they counter it again. Ulamog's Crusher seems like a really hard card for them to beat, regardless, just because of Annihilator. Um, so that's the question. And I th think... I think I'm going to. I think I'm going to go down one and just bring in Pulse of Marassa, just for the countered Ulamog's Crusher, and try it like that. Uh, this hand is really weird. I think I'm going to keep it, but this is a very weird hand. We are just one. We have eight cards that can turn the tower or power plant on. And we have 12 cards. 12 cards we could try to find one you know what i mean kind of so i think we're going to lead on slagwood's bridge here and then build our tron off of that in case we have epic um ancient stirrings so i think we chromatic star though i still think i stick on the same plan i'm on i think it's slagwood bridge go and then start building tron from there um we can start like with Claus, the self assembler and stuff. Try to put on a lot of pressure to keep them like tap down until we can try to get Crusher out. Uh, yeah, Tower, Chromatic Sphere. I'm just gonna pass here. I'm just gonna pass. Words of wisdom, sure. Dang. <laughs> I was like, I saw the Urz. I was like, oh, did we get mine? Another tower, though, is not bad to have for the future. It's also worth noting we have the Haunted Fingraph. This is one of those matchups. Like, Ulamog's Crusher is really going to be the, the powerhouse card against them if it sticks. Just because even if they tangle it down, the fact, like, Ulamog's Crusher just makes them annihilate cards when it attacks. It doesn't matter if they fog us or not. We still make them sacrifice cards. So it's just really powerful. Um, let's top deck a mine here. Just make our life a little bit easier. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, yep. I'm just going to go ahead and crack this. Uh-oh. Now we're going to have to discard one. Dang. Dang. We're going to have to discard one. What do we discard here? <laughs> Probably just a self assembler. Man, I don't want to do that though. Um. Yep, I'm just gonna do it. I want the land. I think the land's gonna be important in this matchup. <clears throat> I could be wrong on that though. We get the creature back with Haunted. That is true. I just don't like... So, my reasoning for that is is because when we go to Ulamog's Crusher, um, <clears throat> the fin graph isn't as good because well, then we could accidentally get the self-assembler. So, that's my reasoning there. I still think we lead on... 
Maelstrom Colossus? Nope, I'm just leading on Crusher. Let's just crush. Dang, dude. They had it. Well, next turn we're definitely Colossus seeing then. <laughs> um, yep, I would like to draw two. Chromatic and Relic. Okay, Relic's kind of cool. Uh, I'm going to play Tower here. Maelstrom Colossus. Cascade into huge thing, please. Okay. Relic's cool. For what it's worth, I guess. Um, we have three mana. That's Ancient Stirrings. Another Colossus. Sure. Oh, I didn't realize Pulse of Marassa was in there. Dang it. Oh, we couldn't. Oh, that's, that's why I didn't realize it was there, because we can't grab it. Makes sense. Um, you know what's cool is I can exile the self assembler. Can you get that relic down. I am gonna get it down. What's cool is I can I can exile my own self assembler so we can guarantee to pick up Ulamog's crusher here. They're definitely baiting another counter spell here. Oh yeah, they're gonna weather the storm. Sure, whatever. I don't care. It's still one of those things. Like we get a crusher and it goes unchecked. Like it doesn't matter. Like you can weather a million times. You know. That was a right call on that one. It's definitely, definitely a uh, weather the storm. Yo to end step. Six, ten, eleven. So I'm not gonna have enough mana to do both. So I think this turn we just this turn we just Maelstrom Colossus a bunch. I'm gonna go ahead and attack. Uh, excellent line of play on exiling your own creature to guarantee the crusher. Yeah, that's what I'm like. That's what I'm hoping to do with that that move there. Uh, Boulder Branch, sure. All right. I thought about playing self assembler there, but I'd rather just have double relic up. Personally, behold the multiverse, sure. They don't have anything in the graveyard right now that's that exciting. Um, we can just start hitting their graveyard twice, though, instead of just exiling out graveyards. But they could play a card to try to make me, like, force into uh, Ulamog's Crusher, exiling it, but we'll see what happens here. I do like doing this a bunch, that's for sure. Moments peace, sure.
Um, they probably have the arcane denial again, but we're going to do it. We're going for it. Oh, it's stuck. Okay, this gets interesting now. Snap. <laughs> I mean, they definitely have lands out the wazoo. That's for sure. Now we don't have to attack with everything. We can just keep attacking with the Womog's Crusher, hopefully, and that's... I mean, Tangle's pretty good. That's for sure. But we have to attack every turn with it anyway. So, is what it is. Let's see what they do here. If they want to stream a thought. Nope. They're going to mill me for a couple. They do lose moments piece, though, which feels pretty good. Now we can kind of keep their graveyard, hopefully, a little bit under check. This deck gave me the ringer last time I played it, so I kind of like a little bit of the position we're in. Uh, We didn't lose our other Ulamog Crusher, so, like, that's kind of cool. Um... I just like attacking with these two, honestly. Let's get these Annihilators going. Yeah, take that. There's the Tangle. Holds back our, holds back our Crusher one turn. I'm going to start digging a little bit. What do you guys think the best colors and rings going to be? Red. <laughs> I think it's red. I think red has a lot of juice coming from that set. Um, for Popper, it's red. That's what I think. I think it's red. No, for the ring emblem itself? Probably still red. <laughs> I think like doesn't the ring kind of favor more aggress like aggression? Come on, let's find the other crusher. Dang. Uh, you know what's cool? Let's do this. Play map. Sack map. Grab. Oh, our bajuka bog. I didn't realize it got milled over. Oh, well. <laughs> um, two, three, four, five, six. I just want to play the self-assembler just to get the last one of our deck. We're thinning out our deck for uh, Crusher here, pretty much. It is worth noting, though, about, like, you know, mill range here. That is worth keeping in mind. I was thinking Rakdos or Orzov. That could be. I mean, Rakdos, yeah, probably. Any, like, real aggression strategies, I feel like, probably benefits from the ring temptation. We're going to attack with the other big guys. Moments peace, sure. Didn't tap relic. Oh yeah, I didn't, did I? Whoops. Um Another boulder branch. Mr. Rice's fault, Mitchell. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I didn't tap it. 
hundred percent. Um, cast a border branch, crystal grotto, scry one, put on bottom, pass. Behold the multiverse, sure. I mean, we're kind of at a point like just tapping the relic's not going to do a whole lot of good. Sorry, I'm so in love with the new set. I can't wait for tomorrow. Yeah, it's. I'm pretty excited for it too. Uh, weather the storm again for a million, sure. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to yield through the rest of this turn. Probably just sack relic here. Yeah, I'm leaning toward it. I want to see if they like stream of thought, because I don't think th stream of thought is instant speed. I think it's sorcery speed. So I'm kind of just waiting for that. Can they stream a thought for win here, though? We're kind of down in cards. They might be able to stream a thought for win. I don't think so. They're counting. Exactly. <laughs> That's why I'm like, they're counting it. So let's see if they can hit it. They only get us for four, eight. I mean, I always love the replicate. Always throws me off how it works. Same thing with storm. I always screw up my counting for it. Wretched grift, the other relic. We don't have a lot of cards left in our deck, so it might just get us. I'm just natural mill. Um, other expedition maps not that exciting. They are down uh, a tangle. They're only down a tangle and a moments in two moments piece. Wow. Um, let's get in with this team here. They're down to two cards in hand, aren't they? I should have just went with a team. Self-assembler. I'm going to look at my deck at self-assembler just to see what's left. Uh, Crusher, Wretch's Grift, Pulse, Fingren, a bunch of stars and stuff. Uh, the opponent's not good at making friends. <laughs> I guess not if they're playing Fall, great. Right? They are down two stream of thoughts, though. But, like, you know what I mean? Now we don't really have... Unless we get another Crusher, we don't really have an incentive to ever play another card here. Stream of thoughts, Sorcery, just for personal reference. I think they're living off their top deck. I think so, too. Oh, they totally are. They totally are. Yep, I <laughs> got there. <laughs> yeah, they were totally living off the top deck 100%. As soon as they activated the scribe, I'm like, oh yeah, you're right, Mitchell. They're totally top deck here. Dude, that feels good to beat that deck because last time I played against that deck, it creamed me. It just fogged me to oblivion. You know, part of the name, but feels good to get a victory against it. Oh, Mulligan. Mm, this is a Mulligan too. 
I mean, I like the Navigator's Compass, but one Tron land, Tron piece is not the best, especially without an Expedition map. If one of these cards was Expedition map or uh, Ancient Stirrings, I'd probably keep it. Oh, God. It just gets worse. Um, Let's keep this one. Let's bottom you. Bottom you. Try it like that. Lead on Agent Stirrings out the gate. Tron land piece number two. Come on. Uh. Yeah, we got him, but I'll take power plane, I guess. I like this deck a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. I think this deck is super sweet. Definitely, like, climbing up a, one of my uh, favorite decks. I have a Petron Project deck with both Self-Assembler and Squadron Hawk combined with Feldon's Crane to reshuffle and refine them. It's a fun trick. Right on. We have a Mono Black, Mono Blue Sack deck that I want to play soon again that uh, one of the builds has Wretched Throng with the... with the... Uh, Come on, brain. Um, the Feldon's Crane to recycle the Wretched Throngs. So that definitely seems pretty cool. Just constant value all the time. <laughs> uh, red Green. Let's see a Gruel deck here. Burning Tree Emissary. They have the Double Burn. Okay, Nest Invader. Pretty good, though. This is a matchup where Breath Weapon main deck is going to be pretty good if we can get it. Wretched Grift. We should be should be favored on any decent draw. Yeah, in theory. Um, just don't know if I crack this chromatic star yet this turn. I guess we can wait on their turn, see if we get a breath weapon, and then if we draw a breath weapon, we can fire it off. It's not like if we draw an ancient stirrings, we don't have green mana, you know what I mean. Boulder Branch Column will help kind of dig us out of the beats that I foresee us having. <laughs> uh, and Rebirth. Oh my god, Breath Weapon would be insane. Uh, I'm just going to do it now. Just see if we can circumvent some damage here. Come on, breath weapon. Oh, come on. That Moto Premium coming in hot today. I just take the hit. <laughs> I've had like a week and a half of the... I, I told our opponent we drew it off the star. Super gold fist. <laughs> I, uh, I've had a week and a half of like the worst draws imaginable. So that's the variance coming back around to help me out a little bit. I don't think it's GG's quite yet. We'd still need more land. Um, yeah, you're a bottom. We still need land. Uh, unfortunately, our cards are not, uh, our cards are a little big. So lucky. <laughs> Our opponent said so lucky. I said I had my fingers crossed. <laughs> I really did. <laughs> I was like, come on. Um, you can play Boulder Branch for his prototype. Oh, that is true, White Lotus. I always forget that that is a ability. Um, and I'm going to do that, actually. I do forget that that's the thing. 
suspect by you off soon. I'm going to assume so too. It seems very, very, very pliable. Bryugroff is like one of my favorite cards too. That card's so awesome. But I 100% see that coming sometime soon. Although they might not have it like right now in their hand, but they definitely have it at some point. Three drop, uh, Simeon Spirit Guide, hard cast, interesting. It's cool. They probably have a Convoke card too. There's like a Convoke cre Creature or Pump Spell too they probably have. Uh, something we need to just be on the lookout of. Two, three, four, five, six. We're one away from Wretched Griff. We could Wretched Griff off the Boulder Branch Golem, but... Honestly, I don't even like attacking here, to be honest with you. I'm afraid of getting punched back way harder. I think I'd rather just pass... The boulder branch is going to be, the boulder is going to be a great blocker. Plus, we're like, if we can just keep drawing lands or expedition map or something, like we just have the bigger bombs. You know what I mean? So we just got to do that. Well, we could do it again. We could do it again, which makes me kind of just want a wretched griff here. Wretched Griff would cost one and we get a redraw. Was it CMC then? Of hmm. Not the best draw. We get a Maelstrom Colossus. Uh, three four is pretty good though. Do you have the emerge? Yeah, we have the emerge uh, off of Wretched Grift. I guess it counts as only a four drop if you cast it for prototype. It doesn't actually, the CMC is not seven. So that's, if you're going to play Boulder Grange Golem, that is something worth noting for the future. We do have a four of breath weapon, so we could fire another breath weapon to clean up their board very nicely. We probably don't have to worry about something like. Probably don't have to. They probably have a pump spell here. I'm going to let this go through. Or they could have lightning bolt. Land. Yeah, could be a land. Come on. Uh, we need mine. Mine or, or I'll take a, uh, I'll take an expedition map here. We get neither. Wow. Um, hmm. So we could just get chromatic star for a redraw. That kind of sucks. All right, we had the breath weapon, and then our deck said, all right, you've ran hot enough. Settle down. Uh, I'm going to crack this Chromatic Star and prototype the other Boulder Branch. My creatures are hiding, <laughs> is what our opponent says. If nothing else, you're drawing the lands and thinning. Yeah, true. We're just trying to draw cards here. Um, so let's crack this for green. We can prototype this other boulder branch. Yeah, I'm still going to prototype this other boulder branch. I'd rather have some chunky blockers. You know what I mean? I don't imagine they have something like rights of the last and rights of the initiate. Uh, so we just need to find two lands here or one really good land, which would be versus mine. We could also find expedition map. Uh, we haven't done one expedition map yet, so we have eight chances to find a mine 
actually 10 because there's ancient stirrings that could find it. So we have a we have a good handful of chances to find it. That's a big critter. Just to end a turn, right? Okay, just to end a turn. We have a lot of good draws. We do have a lot of really good draws. Uh, in comes in the team here. I'm probably just I just take the seven. I might regret this. Cause I might have Tamir Battle Rage. We're still like safe-ish. They just have another one of those. We could get in lightning bolt range though. Okay, we're, we're at 11. That's not that scary. Yay, we did it! <laughs> Finally! Holy smokes. About time you showed up. All right. Uh, Crusher. I don't know how they beat Crusher, honestly. Um, I'm just going to crack Chromatic Star. And I'm just going to play Chromatic Star and crack it right now. Just see if we can find like a breath weapon or something. Something clean. Okay, we don't find something clean. Three, five, six. So we're one away from emerging, so I'm just going to pass the turn. I'm not going to attack. I want to have up all the blockers as possible. Oh, their opponent is down to two cards in hand. And we have this giant thing. We have a lot of good draws. Very, very true. My wife beat me all three games. Best three out of five. To be fair, it was an off night for me. <laughs> no worries. That's the way the cornhole goes sometimes. Um, Against them, I don't know what I want, honestly. Like, I feel like our deck's pretty good against what they're doing right now, you know? There's an argument for Twin Silk Spider just to go wide. You know what I mean? I don't know how good of an argument Twin Silk Spider actually is. As opposed to, like, the rest of our deck. Yeah, I don't know. There's also an argument for just bringing in another Fingren Marauder, too. Like, I feel like our deck's pretty well suited against them, like, out of the gate. I might just go up one Fingraph, uh, Fingren Marauder, and go down one. I don't know, because Compass would be really good. I don't know. Don't need a board, in my opinion, unless you think Twin Silk is better than Griff. I don't think it is. I don't think Twin Silk's really... Maybe we could go, like, let's go down one Griff and bring in one Twin Silk. I'm going to do a two. I'm going to do a two-two split. Let's just see how it does. I haven't, like, really got to test the limits of Twin Silk Spider quite yet, so let's see how it does. We'll do it. We're doing it for scientific research here. How'd you know, Lotus? I played my dad and won three out of five matches last night. Played yesterday, then you won them all, boy. Um, ooh. So the problem here is we have the map, but we only have one Tron land. Yeah, I don't like this hand. I like this hand even less. I'm not a fan of this hand either. All right, this hand's better. Nope, we'll keep this. Bottom you, bottom the extra plant, and probably just chromatic sphere. I liked hand one. Too slow, I think. Yeah, hand one, I think my, my biggest concern was it was just too slow. I think it was just too slow of a hand. Now, I'm not saying this hand is any quicker <laughs> by any means, but it could be, you know? Uh, Yep, power plant and a star. Fast turn. We can get to Tron or like Crystal Grotto or something. It would be a lot better off. Um, we're going to crack this star next turn for Ancient Stirrings. 
I would like to top deck one of our colored lands. That'd be cool. We get a breath weapon. Still cool. Um, I'm just gonna crack this. We draw off of it a crystal grotto. Crystal grotto is kind of cool. Uh, I'm gonna ancient stirrings here. Mine, cool. All right. All right, we're doing things now. Um, throw down tower, strings, then grotto. Oh, yes, we could grotto to filter our, our lands. We're not doing anything with Tron anyway, really, turn three, are we? Um, I like having lands. So I kind of want to top you. But I think I'm going to bottom you. Don't know if that was right. Grotto be good for breath weapon too. Yeah, never mind. You just found it. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes uh, Mitchell, I get kind of wrapped up in the game, and so like I'm like trying to figure out what I'm doing in the game, and then now I look over and it's like people are yelling at me to do. I'm not saying you're yelling. It's just an expression. But like people are like, "Hey, do this or this or this," and it's like, "Oh, should have paid attention." <laughs> Honestly, bottom of the second grotto. That's what I was thinking too. I like the idea of like I said, just having lands, but. I do feel like bottom in the grotto. How crazy is this burning tree emissary going to be? Streaming ain't easy. Man, it ain't easy being cheesy, that's for sure. Does anybody know what our record is right now? I know we're not doing a league, but like, does anybody know? Uh, Chromatic Star? All right, so I like just Urza Mine here. Play out the star. And then next turn, we're going to take a lot of damage here. But then next turn, we could potentially Breath Weapon away a lot of stuff. Um, and potentially Twin Silk Spider all in one turn. So we'll have... Yeah, we need six mana. We'll have eight, so... There's the Convoke card. Did they buy it back? I think they did. I imagine that we're going to get crunched for a little bit here. You're 5-0 in games, 3-0 in matches. Dang. Uh, your record is 3 out of the 6 GTA 1 of stars, a.k.a. seriously dangerously cheesy. <laughs> I like it. I actually might consider getting the new GTA at some point, like whenever it drops, just because I haven't played a GTA game since San Andreas. That's the last one I've played. But I just want to see like how different they are than when I was a kid, you know? Like I see a lot of videos online. They look crazy, like especially like GTA Online. But uh, yeah, sure. Let's get that pump spot out of the way. Are we just dead here though? No, almost. All right, so next turn we can breath weapon, hopefully, uh, hopefully away, and twin silk spider. So okay, cool. Um, twin silk spider. And then we can play Chromatic Star for redraw. Play the Chromatic Star and pass. Oops, it's going to be Upsetty Spaghetti. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I feel like this is probably going to be a little bit of a close one. Um, <clears throat> I do hate that our breath weapon kills our little spiders off, which is maybe a reason to br just play the wretched grift over the spiders. But I do like having the double, double here with the second breath weapon. Yeah, I definitely think the second breath weapon is pretty good. Uh, let's chromatic star here. I mean, chromatic sphere. It's chromatic star. I'm just trying to find something. You know what I mean? Crystal grotto. Scry one. We got to top that, right? Okay, there's like no way we don't top that. 
would have attacked first. Yeah, I guess. I guess we probably should have, right? Uh, I'm just going to leave it the way it is. Let's just attack and move on. We're not going to be able to cast most of our big bombs this turn anyway. This turn anyway. So we could just hold up the breath weapon V2. Getting in for two, baby. These spiders are spicy. They get another zero one. Uh, the big dog would be kind of rough for us right now. Not, no pun intended there. <laughs> uh, I'm going to crack this chromatic star in their turn. Grab that other, uh, that other breath weapon and draw another tower. Which is not the most exciting thing. Part of me wants to not attack here. Just in case. I guess we could send one in, right? I mean, again, we have the breath weapon. We have double breath weapon, so... Gotta attack, keep pressure. <laughs> the pressure up with the little one-twos. You know it's going to be a big move if that plant token comes in, right? We're all aware that's what's going to happen if the plant token comes in. Again, my creatures are hiding. Oh no! Our opponent says their creatures are hiding from them. I guess they have a probably a handful of just scary pump spells. I'll probably help if I was over here. Uh, creature A, hey, creature. It's slashing time. <laughs> it's time to get serious. It's slashing time. All right. The spiders can come in now. These spiders be spoodering. I definitely kind of like, like, the more I think about it, it's like the more I do kind of like bringing in the twin silk in this matchup. Uh, just for the back end. Uh oh. Rut row. All right. Well, we did gain life, so there's that, you know. We got to gain life off of it. Navigator's compass. Uh, I'm gonna play it just to gain three life, cause why not? We're not doing anything else. Um. We're back up to 19, so I feel a little bit more comfortable about just attacking with the spiders. And then we have Crystal Grotto and Navigator Compass if we need a double breath weapon for some reason. They want to block with a plant token and then pump it to save it. Like, I'm fine with that. You know what I mean? Maybe if we get more members and we can't... Uh-oh. What's this? Maybe if we get more member... What is this? We get more members uh, and unlock more emotes, we can get like a sla <laughs> slash in time emote or something. Uh, okay, they're buying back the Sprout Swarm. Sure. Sure, sure. Hmm. So that's what they're doing here. So we could in step try to breath weapon. I don't like that play quite yet. Wait until they cast it again to draw their mana. We need that emote, right? Okay. It's Colossus time. Let's hit a big critter. Nope. <laughs> Never is. Uh, I'm going to pass here because uh, Glimmer Baron is legitimately terrifying. And we can try to wait for them to react to it to try to get them. We 
We could wait until... We might just try to fire off... Okay. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Okay, Milstrom Colossus. I'm going to fire off this breath weapon. Wait. Uh-oh. Surprise didn't spawn your turn. Guess not. Sorry. <laughs> Should I have waited? Um, yeah, okay. You know what? I want to let them have this token. We don't have the mana anyway, I guess, right? <laughs> Didn't think about that. Now he'll sack it again and the barn will live again. True. But we're in a position where we just double Colossus. Um, yeah, just gonna play Colossus again. Uh, yeah, Castle Wretched Grift. Draw a card. Expedition map is okay. Um. Play Expedition map. Crack Expedition map. Get a tower. Right? Yeah, tower. Play tower. Uh, attack with Maelstrom Colossus. And now we just play Reactionary, I guess, with Breath Weapon. There goes in the Simeon Spirit Guide again. That's Breath Weapon again. No? <laughs> Am I just punning these Breath Weapons? You're right, I should have waited for it to come onto the battlefield. Yeah, that was a punt. All right, that's fair. Terrible timing. That is very terrible time. It's late, okay? I've <laughs> I uh <laughs> we've been streaming for a while. This is probably going to be the last match of the night. <laughs> so we can still get there. We'll still get there, but yeah. <laughs> um Definitely have not been playing this very well. Well, it isn't a league. That is true. It is not a league. That is very, very true. <laughs> if this is a league, I'd be kicking myself a lot more for those for those plays. For sure. Um <laughs> Thanks. That's kind of scary. Just like my cornhole games tonight. Uh-oh. Are those punts going to make me lose the game? Chat saved Mangucci in the league the other night. Really? Yeah, chat can save people for sure. Um, buy him back again. Sure. Can they just go infinite here? Is this infinite? We're down three breath weapons, by the way. <laughs> Discount? Yep. So it seems like. For the good game. 
I think our opponent's scooping here. They are infinite for a while. Uh, for a while. So they can go infinite though. That's kind of interesting. I'm having awful draws. Where you got this game in the bag? I don't know if I'd say in the bag, but we're definitely trying here. Uh, I still don't want to attack with everything. Well, if we attack with everything, they kind of have to block. They have to block the two Maelstrom Colossus. We play Boulder Branch. I'm just going to attack with everything. Eventually need 20 green critters on board, I think. <laughs> Cheesy Pete's. That's a crazy infinite then, ain't it? Uh, the infinite combo is a large count. Yeah, you know, I guess it would have to be to keep buying back the to keep buying back the sapperling token. Cast a border branch golem. Yield through turn. I haven't added any of my artifacts at all. Not even artifact lands. Oh, there's our artifact land finally. Uh, they're dead in the air though. They also had only one red source this entire game. Which also, like, never feels good. Route Swarm again. This Prop Swarm card's pretty good. Breath Weapon is our next draw watch. That'd be, that'd be, that'd be great. Um, yeah. Throw you in front of the glimmer. Thanks, Mitchell, for another ch uh, for another super chat. I super appreciate it. Have a great, wonderful rest of your night. Hopefully we'll catch you again. Oh, they block with Burning Tree. It's like, what happened to Burning Tree Emissary? Man, if they could have gave it Life Link, that would have been like a whole other thing, wouldn't it? Nice game. GG's. Well, this is why they just fog <laughs> and beat us. <laughs> what a cool dude. Yeah, our opponent seemed pretty sweet. Boom, we got there. So how many was that? And like I think we did we, did we go undefeated there tonight? Okay, kind of. We went like 4-0 because the first person we won the first game and then they bounced. So kind of. Kind of. Let's talk about this deck real quick. I don't think there's a lot to say that we didn't demonstrate tonight. Oh, I meant Mitchell. What a cool chatter. Oh, yeah, Mitchell seems awesome. They came in a chat the other night. They seem really cool. Uh, sorry, I was taking an Apex break. No worries. How is Apex right now, to be honest? I've not played it in a while. Um, But I always liked it. But it's probably been a year since I've, since I've booted up Apex. So let's talk about this deck that we didn't see. This deck is sweet. Uh, I love this deck a lot. It just, it's simple magic. 
and it's playing a bunch of big critters. So, like, what's there not to like about that? World's Edge sucks. Everything else is pretty okay right now. I'm not sure what World's Edge is. Um, GG, bro. Undefeated record. Yeah, we kind of went... I mean, we didn't go 5-0. I'm not going to get in a fifth game tonight. It's already getting kind of late. Um, but we did go... 4-0-ish. And it, we also 2 0 would every game we played. Which is worth noting. Um, I've had some pretty good success with this deck uh, in the past. It's a map in the game. Oh, they have different maps? <laughs> Last time I played it, it was only one map. So I didn't know that. So it shows last time I played it, right? Um... But yeah, this deck's sweet. I think the land base is perfectly fine. Haunted Fingrath is really good when you get it. Uh, you get your green sources pretty consistently. You get, uh, you know, you get your uh, Breath Weapons main deck. Like, Breath Weapon just clears all the little weenie cards out of the way. And then we just have such large creatures, such a big top end, that it just makes our opponent, like, we can just punch through their big creatures. You know what I mean? I mean, Death Touch is obviously going to be a problem. Something like, um, oh, what's it called? Thorn of the uh, the Black Rose, I think, would be kind of rough for our card to get around. But when you kind of have some indisposable creatures like Boulder Branch Golem or Self Assembler, where you can kind of just punch with them and you don't care as much as something like Lulamox Crusher, uh, maybe even Fingrim Marauder at a point, like it's pretty satisfying. Self Assembler is just an awesome card. I think any deck that you get to play that is just super fun. Um, yeah, I really don't have any complaints. Even the sideboard, I think, is pretty well tuned. Like, this is a pretty solid list through and through. I just think it's like it's very vulnerable to some artifact hate, but it's not like super vulnerable, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, obviously, if you play against someone running like 12 <laughs> kill artifact spells, you're probably going to run into some issues, but. Uh, that's when you just like if you run that you run into that you just bring in all your finger and marauders right you just you just swap out some of your uh, artifact creatures for like your boulder branch golems you just bring in your finger and marauders you know what i mean something like that cascades too powerful to like try to trim out so uh when you get to make the island cult worshippers quit <laughs> it's a good night <laughs> true <laughs> bird lotus i know right uh, make them mad with breath weapon, breath weapon attacks. Yeah, breath weapon is super solid, super good. Um, yeah, I, I love this deck. This is doing what I want to do in Magic, which is just being aggressive. This is a pretty aggressive deck. Um, you just kind of build up your critters. I mean, you build up your land, and then you just keep dropping bombs after bombs after bombs after bombs, uh, and then you just flatten them, and it's super satisfying. <laughs> like it's a very satisfying deck to play. Uh, I love it. I, I don't know. And there's not much more to say about it. I think this deck is super sweet. I really, really like it. Uh, definitely want to play it again. Uh, I want to build paper dragons. <laughs> um, definitely, uh, definitely really, really enjoy it. And definitely would want to play it again. This is a deck. The more I play it, the more I'm like, I would probably run this through a league. Maybe. Um, we'll see how the, the meta shapes up after affinity took three of the popper, Affinity and Synthesizer took six of the eight slots, right? Could you see Avenging Hunter in this deck? No. My reasoning is because you don't protect yourself enough, I think, for you to protect against... For you to protect the uh, initiative, if you will. I don't I don't think so. I think with this deck in particular, too, I think Fingrin Marauder and Boulder Branch is just better creatures, which is going to be weird to say. It's difficult to run Hunter because you need cards to protect it. Yeah, and I just don't think we have the protection package around it. But, like, Fingrin Marauder just gains a, a ton of life with our deck, just built as is. Self-Assembler lets us fetch up a lot of 4-4s, four which is just powerful. And then Boulder Branch Golem, a 6-5 is nothing to shake a stick at. Plus, you gain 6 life when it enters. Like, for what we're doing, I think we're just better off not even bothering with Avenging, Avenging Hunter. And then, another thing that I like about this deck is we don't have to worry about the Monarchy or the Initiate. Like, we can try to steal it, like we did Game 1, where we traded the Monarchy back and forth. But we don't have to worry about protecting it. We're not doing that. We can steal it from our opponent, sure. But we don't have to worry about protecting it. We can just 
punch. And I think that's why I like, I like this deck a lot too. Um, great. I don't think it's necessary. Same reason you don't want Monarch, uh, oh, we'll pay for dragons. I think it'd be sweet. Um, build it then build some, some, uh, are you talking about popper dragons? Uh, if so, I, I would love to see a popper dragon list. That'd be really cool. Send me your ideas in discord to I'll help you. Yes. You guys start brewing together. Um, I love it when uh when I see like y'all communicate on building a deck and stuff. It's really cool. It's fun. It's fun to like <clears throat> it's fun to see that like in the Discord as like we kinda like tinker around and give suggestions and stuff for the decks. Um plus you guys are also teaching me a lot about cards that I didn't know about. So that sounds really cool. Tomorrow though, I'm gonna be back at my normal time tomorrow, which is like ten thirty ish. 10, 10 30 ish in the morning, US standard Eastern time, Eastern standard time, whatever you want to call it. Um, just tonight with it being Juneteenth, I had it off. So, and we were doing a lot today. Tomorrow though, I'm going to take a look at this really sweet Abzan pers uh, Persist Mutate deck. That is a, co a uh, suggestion and collaboration. That's the word I was looking for from Darius and Raging Bull in our community. This deck looks super super sweet so i am pretty excited about trying this one out tomorrow as well so we'll see how this one runs tomorrow and then the rest of the week we're probably just going to be looking at uh lord of the ring cards that's probably what we're gonna be doing the rest of the week is just looking at lord of the ring cards and other decks uh i have some cards in mono black sack i want to try i have some cards in uh torex i want to try mono black control and also, I want to see if we can get, like, a food deck that uses Cauldron Cat, the Cauldron Familiar, pretty relatively uh, often. So, hope to see you all tomorrow. I'm going to go for tonight. So, I hope you all had a wonderful, uh, have a wonderful rest of your night. And I hope you had a wonderful time watching. Uh, if you want to support the channel, a great way to do so is just subscribe, liking, sharing, and commenting the videos go a long way in supporting the channel. If you want to go even further, you can consider becoming a member, $1 a month. There's a link to the membership down below. I uh, become a member here on YouTube. You get uh, your name put in a scroll before and after the stream that you'll see here in a second. You also get uh, your name turns green. You get a little badge next to your name. Uh, we're one member away from unlocking some more emotes. So that's pretty exciting. So one more member, we get to unlock some more emotes so we can have for the stream. And it also gets you access to our Discord server where there's been a bunch of brewing and a bunch of fun ideas about decks and stuff to go. And it's not only just about magic. It's anything in any interesting topic uh, can be talked in there, I guess. Not any interesting topic. I would like to keep it mostly politically free. Um, but anything like nerdy, stuff like that. So it's a great it's a great Discord. I'll throw that out there. I'll say it. It's a great Discord. So consider becoming a member. And uh, hopefully I will catch you all tomorrow. Darius and I are working on the cat food too. Yeah, I saw a uh, I saw a food deck pop up uh, in the deck lists that look really sweet. So be looking forward to that. And I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your night. And maybe I'll catch you tomorrow. Peace, everybody.